Hello and welcome to my YouTube series, Increase Your Research Impact. In this episode, I'll talk about the last of an eight-step workflow to ensure your paper achieves the impact it deserves, engaging in blogging. Blogging is something you can do pretty much on any topic, um, but we'll focus on topics that are of relevance to academia. So I do a lot of blogging on my own website on um, academic skills um, and I know that Nico does some of that on LinkedIn um, as well. Um, I also write about my own research um, and um, I also uh, write um, uh, more generally about publish or perish and tips on how to use it and a couple of other categories. More generally, academics tend to write mostly about their own research. So you can write a blog about an individual article, but you can also, and that's oftentimes more useful, is write up a blog post about a number of articles. And I see Andrea nodding, it's like, because that is how you create impact. You don't create impact by doing one article on a particular topic. You create impact by having a research stream on a particular topic. So to give you one example, um, I have done a bit of uh, work on um, response styles in international meal surveys. So if you send out a, a questionnaire across different countries and you ask people to respond on a Likert scale, one to seven, in some countries, regardless of what the question is, they will always say five or six. In other countries, regardless of what the question is, they will always say two or three, pretty much. Um, so that makes it really hard to do research internationally because you don't know whether they actually agree or disagree with the statement or whether they just agree or disagree in general. So given that I am in international business and this was not something that was generally recognized in my field, I did quite a bit of research on this. So I wrote up all the studies and there have been three in total and then I also referred to some useful methodological articles um, in international business. So altogether it's something that people can draw on if they do research in international business. Um, this works really well um, if you are not just wanting to share your research but also do further research. Two of my co-authors have also guest blogged on my uh, website and they've discussed their research to date. This um, co-author, Helena Tenser, she does work on multilingual teams and she's published a couple of articles for, in total, different elements of multilingual teamwork um, and has just briefly summarized each of them and has used this blog post to go to companies, because all of her work is interview-based, qualitative case studies, go to companies and say, this is the work I'm doing. They're going to read this. They're go not going to read her academic articles. They're going to be completely uninterested in her academic articles. But with this, they can give a quick introduction about her research and see, ah, she's actually done quite a few things in this area. Maybe we should let her in and uh, give her a chance to interview us. Um, I have another one from one of my PhD students uh, who's done um, a lot of work on ethnic identity for expatriates and whether having a shared ethnicity with local uh, employees is helpful or might actually be a disadvantage. So she's published a couple of papers on this and she's discussed each of those in turn, giving a quick summary of what it was about. So when she's going to go back to companies and say, I want to do more research, she can actually refer to this. So see it in that way as well. So, there are a lot of different outlets for blogs. Um, if you have your own website like myself, you can do it there. If um, you're active on LinkedIn, you can do some blogging on LinkedIn. Uh, but there is also um, a university platform to uh, blog, and DX Minds. 
And I know Andrea has blocked on there and a few other colleagues have blocked on there as well. Um, and you can see that there's lots of different types of posts. Let's have a look at business and economics and see what's there. Sean as well, Lillian, Ian Roper, Clive Body, and Roger Klein. There's five pages of this, so yeah, there's quite a few people who have done this. I think this is a really good way um, to uh, make your research visible, and it also builds up the university uh, brand name as well, because it shows external people what kind of research is done at Middlesex. At the same time though, um, you might want to engage a bit wider because not everyone might go to the MDX Minds blog. Um, they might find it when they go and search in Google through keywords, but sometimes it might not be high up enough in the results to find it. Um, so you can also look at other options and one that I like in particular is um, the London School of Economics Business Review which is one that has been established quite a bit longer ago than MDX Minds. It being LSE, it also has a slightly wider readership than um, Middlesex has. Um, and they do accept blog posts um, if you have an interesting story. Uh, you can see that a number of um, our academics, these are all posts for Middlesex University. Um, I think this is Daniela Loops. Um, unfortunately, the names aren't mentioned here. And Michaela has published here. This is Daniela. Uh, Marianne Riesdorf, Richard Croucher, and Thomas Lange article they published together. Um, Elizabeth Cotton has done quite a bit here as well. Um, and it is a blog that is visited regularly by people. LSE has an, a range of blogs. This is specifically focused on, on business. Um, so it's a good one to look at as well, um, and one that might widen your audience. Then the third one um, I would like to mention is the conversation, which is basically um, kind of a newspaper, but then written purely by academics. So um, there is a lot of um, information here um, in the sciences and the life sciences but um, you'll also find uh, social sciences covered here as well um, and again um, you can pitch a story to them and they won't publish everything uh, but we have colleagues who've already published there 38 uh, articles by Middlesex University colleagues so just go through them and see whether there's anyone you know, ask for their experience. I haven't personally blogged there yet. I think I should, but I just because I have my own website, I just haven't got to it yet. But it is a very well respected uh, newspaper. And also journalists increasingly go there to get accessible kind of summaries of research, which they then write about in the more traditional newspapers. So it creates a, a, a multiplier effect. Um, so uh, Middlesex Minds, LSE Business Review and The Conversation, three options um, to explore that I think could be really useful. Want to know more about blogging? I suggest you read this blog post. Just Google it and you'll find it easily. In the next and final episode, I'll talk about what to do if you really just don't have time for all of this and still want to increase the impact of your work.